the original length and it has been displaced by some certain small length change in length delta l and if i say if a is the area of just the upper layer can you tell me what should be the formula for shearing stress if you are able to recall what should be the formula for shearing stress f is the just uh, you can check into your notes as well f is the deforming force applied and a is the area of the upper face then the shearing stress should be f upon a f upon a yes it should be f upon a now see the change in the length or the displacement produced is delta l and the original length was l so can you again tell me what is shearing strain now um delta l by l delta l by l since we have seen strain was change in dimension the ratio of change in dimension by the original dimension and shearing strain we have already calculated remember tan theta we have calculated that came out to be delta l divided by l yes, now sir. see shear modulus is the ratio of the shearing stress by the shearing strain so if i put the values in this formula the shear modulus or modulus of rigidity this is also known as modulus of rigidity this is represented by this symbol eta so if i put the values for shear stress it would be f by a divided by the shear strain that is delta l divided by so if i rearrange then again we'll be getting the similar formula as that of young's modulus f l divided by a into delta l this was the young's modulus formula remember yes ma'am it is eta right eta yes the symbol is represented by this n type with one longer end okay and the si unit yes what is the si unit ma'am pascal pascal second good because ll would again get cancelled it to be newton per meter square and newton per meter square you can also say it as pascal just note this page done ma'am so this was modulus of rigidity or shear modulus and this refers to situations in which the shape of a substance is changed by the application of the tangential stress or shear stress now see this is one question related to the above concept only just try this a 0.05 meter cube has its upper face to displace by 0.2 cm by tangential force 8 newton see if this is the cube if this is the cube then the upper face will get displaced so if this is the upper face this will get displaced 
so it is getting displaced by 0 0.0 0 0.2 cm so this is the change in the length this is the shift that is occurring and 0 0.05 is the length of the face of each cube and the force applied the force that has been applied is 8 newton you have to find out the modulus of rigidity means this e down you have to calculate just just try it once and whenever you take the area take the area of the upper layer only because this has been displaced okay ma'am Mom, yes. Mom, uh, eight uh, eighty thousand Pascal. Yes, yes, correct. It's eighty thousand Pascals. Eta because del your delta L is zero point two centimeters, and length you have taken as zero point five. F is eight newton, and what is the area you have taken? Um, L into L. L into L means square of this only, na? 0 0.05? Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, fine. Yes, that's correct. It's 80,000 pascals. Just try one more question based on this shear module. Try this question. Two strips of metals are riveted together at their ends by four rivets. Now, each the diameter of each of the rivets is six millimeters. You have to calculate what is the maximum tension that will be exerted by the strip. And that and the shearing stress should not exceed this much value, 2.3 into 10 to the power 9 pascals.
the, the two metal strips have been riveted together using four of it. So like this, they have been connected. All right. Just take the force as F on all the four rivets and then do the question. Okay, let's discuss this. See, is if F is the force applied on the metal strip, if I'm assuming F is the force applied on the metal strip. So this means F force has been applied to all the four rivets. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So can you tell me what should be the force on each rivet then? Force on each rivet. Ma'am, uh, sure the stress into uh, area? No, 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 no. C, C, C. F is the force applied on all four of them. Yes, ma'am. So what would be the force on a on single? One rivet? by F. Uh, one by F? Uh, sorry, sorry. F by 4? F by 4, exactly. It would be F by 4. Now, let us assume A is the area. See, we can easily find out the area using the diameter radius. But so let us assume A is the area. And the force on each rivet is F by 4. So then for each rivet, what should be the stress on each rivet? Um, uh, uh, F by 4 into area. Exactly. It would be F by 4 times A. Yes? Yes, because this is the force and A is the area. Now see, the maximum value for this is given to us as 2.3 into 10 to the power 9. Means 4 F divided by 4 A is equal to 2.3 into 10 to the power 9. Yes, and see, now only area, we, we can easily find out area. Area can be found from this pi r square. Will only be force be unknown to us. Rest of the quantities are known to us. See, radius is given to you, diameter is given to you as six millimeters. Yes. So radius would be three, three millimeters. millimeters. Yes. And what would be three millimeters in SI unit? Um, um, 3 into 10 raised to the power uh, minus 3. Minus 3, yes. 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters. So we have the radius with us. Now see, if we have to calculate the force, force would be equal to the shearing stress that we have, means 2.3 into 10 to the power 9, multiplied by 4 times the area. And how can we write the area? Pi no, but, uh, Yes. Yes. So pi is 3.14 r square, the square of the radius. That is 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 whole square. This much Newton is the maximum force. Understood? Yes, ma'am. I was calculating that. I was going wrong over there. This force? This force? No, ma'am. Uh, the last step. I was doing the calculation. I went wrong there. Okay, okay. No problem. Just note this term. So, ma'am, we can leave the answer like that also. In this form? 
Uh, yes, ma'am. Or do we need to calculate further? No, no. After the class, you can easily calculate. You have to calculate the answer. Ah, okay. If you will be having the MCQs, you will be getting the four options with the numerical value. And if you will be having subjective question, then you have to solve and write the final answer. I have okay. just left it at this stage because now you can easily calculate. So yes, ma'am. Complete, ma'am. Completed. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Now see, see, we have already covered two moduli of elasticity. One was Young's modulus, okay. which was the ratio of normal stress and longitudinal strain. And right now we have seen shear okay. modulus, modulus of rigidity or shear modulus. That is the ratio of shear stress by shear strain. Now the third type of modulus of elasticity or the last type is left. That is known as bulk, bulk modulus. modulus. Yes. Now see, bulk modulus is the ratio of normal stress to the volumetric strain. If this is the sphere and it has volume V. Now I have applied deforming forces from all the directions. As I, we have discussed this already as well, but still let us revise it. If these are the deforming forces applied, then the sphere will get compressed. So you can easily see this difference from the continuous yellow line to the dotted orange line. Yes. Then the change in volume is delta V. So bulk modulus is actually the ratio of the normal stress. Normal stress was force perpendicular force per unit area. And volumetric strain was the change in volume by the original volume. So bulk modulus. is the ratio of the normal stress to the volumetric strain. Okay, now can you tell me what is the formula for normal stress if you are able to recall? Ma'am, uh, force upon area. Yes, force upon area. And see, for force upon area, that force upon area is actually equal to pressure, P. Yes. Now, can you again recall what is the formula for volumetric strain? Uh, Ma'am, uh, delta V by... Delta V by... Yes. Change in volume by original volume. So, let us represent bulk modulus by B. So, this would be... Now, see, we'll add negative sign over here in case of this volumetric strain. This negative sign would indicate us the decrease in volume because it is getting compressed. So volume is getting decreased. Yes. So this represents the decrease in volume. So bulk modulus would be minus F by A delta V by V. Or you can say bulk modulus instead of force by area, you can write pressure. So that would be minus PV divided by delta V. And again, the SI unit would be what? Pascal? Pascals or Newton per so, meter square. And see, if you want to compare for all the states of matter, remember bulk modulus for solids is the greatest among all the three states of matter. Clear? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, you just know this. Could you please scroll down?
the blue man. Now see one quantity that is left is compressibility. Compressibility is the measure of how a material can be easily compressed. Or you can say in simpler words, you can say compressibility is the reciprocal. Compressibility is the reciprocal of the bulk modulus. So if I represent compressibility by K, that is inversely proportional to B, means bulk modulus. And solids and liquids are relatively incompressible. So they have small values of compressibility, or you can say large values of bulk modulus, which are independent of temperature and pressure. So that we have already seen, bulk modulus for solids was the greatest. Now see, if I write the formula for compressibility, we already have the formula for bulk modulus, so it would be just the reciprocal of this. So since it was minus PV by delta V, here we have delta V by PV. Yes? yes this is the formula for compressibility. Now see, if we have to compare all the states of matter, three states of matter, now for the solids, it would be the least means solids and liquids are relatively incompressible. And now can you tell me the SI unit? Would it remain the same? No, ma'am. No, it won't be. Since it is 1 by bulk modulus, it would be 1 by Pascal's only because the SI unit of bulk modulus is Pascal. So 1 by Pascal's or Pascal's inverse, or even if you wish to write in terms of Newton per meter square, the SI unit would be Newton inverse per meter square. Clear? Mm, yes, ma'am. So just note this as well. Complete, ma'am. Just try a question based on this one. Average depth of Indian Ocean is 3000 meters. You have to find out the fractional compression delta V by V. Bulk modulus is given to you. See, if you want to calculate the pressure and you are stuck there, for calculation of pressure, use this formula. P is equal to H rho. How we are getting this? What is this formula? That will be late, discussed later on in the next chapter, mechanical properties of fluid. So for that time, for solving this question, for calculation of pressure, use P is equal to H rho. Where H is the height of the water column. Rho is the density of water. And density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. And the density of water in CGS is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So you have to remember these values for water's density as well. So first calculate the pressure. Let me know what's the pressure coming out.
Uh, mom? Yes? Mom, pressure would be 3.10 into 10 to the power 7 newtons. Yes, newton. 10 to the power 7. Yes, see. Pressure would be, height is given to you as 3000 meters. So you can write it as 3 into 10 to the power 3. Mm -hmm. And the density, since we are taking everything in SI units, we'll take it as 10 to the power 3 only. And acceleration due to gravity, you can take it as 10 in this question. So it would come out to be 3 into 10 to the power 7 Pascal. So you have the pressure with you now. You have the bulk modulus with you, 2.2 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square. Now can you calculate delta V by V? Yes, ma'am. Just try it once. Mom? Yes? 1.36 into 10 raised to the power minus 2? Yes, correct. Delta V divided by V would be 1.36 into 10 to the power minus 2. See, if the question had asked to calculate the percentage change in the volume. So, now the question is not asking, but had the question asked you, then what you would have done? You, if you want to calculate the percentage change, that would be delta V means change by the original quantity multiplied by 100. That's how we calculate the percentage change. Mm -hmm. So delta V by V you've already calculated. That is 1.36 into 10 to the power minus 2. Now you'll just multiply it by 10 to the power 
two. So this will give you one point three six percent. Fine. Just note this one line as well. Please, ma'am. Okay, do one last question. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This normal density of sea water is given to you as one gram per centimeter cube. What will be its density at a depth of three kilometers? Compressibility is given to you, and the conversion of ATM into CGS unit is given. So what you do? Do cal the whole calculation in terms of CGS unit only. All right. If it's given ten kilometers, convert it into centimeters because rest are given in the CVS unit. And again, if you wish to calculate the pressure, use the similar formula that I have told you. P is equal to H rho G. Just write. Mom. Yes. I'm not able to understand this one. Okay, I'll help you. Have you calculated the pressure? Okay, at least do one thing. Calculate bulk modulus. You have compressibility with you. Calculate the bulk modulus at least. Then I'll help you. Okay.
Any answer for bulk modulus? Ma'am, um, one second. Okay, see, I'll help you. See, see. Look on the screen now. See, compressibility K is given to you as 0 0.00005 per acre. All right. Now, bulk modulus. How are bulk modulus and compressibility related to each other? Inversely proportional. Inversely proportional. This would be 1 divided by 0 0.00005. This ATM would go up. It would be ATM. Is this much fine? Yes, yes. So if you will convert, it will be 5 into 10 to the power minus 5 and 5 and that will give us 2 into 10 to the power 4 ATM. Now see, 1 ATM is equal to 10 to the power 6 dine per centimeter square. So bulk modulus is 2 into 10 to the power 4. So if 1 is this much, so this much would be just multiply. So uh, ma'am, yes. Um, how did you convert that um, ATM into 2 into 10 raised to 4? This? Yes, ma'am. See. If I write it as 1 divided by. Can I write it as 5 into 10 to the power minus 5? This part. Yes, ma'am. Just in the exponential form. Now see, what is 1 divided by 5? It's 0 0.2. Yes, ma'am. And 10 to the power 5 will go up. It would be 10 to the power plus 5. And 0 0.2, I can write it as 2 into 10 to the power minus 1. And 10 to the power 5. So uh, on solving this, I'll be getting... 2 into 10 to the power 4 ATM. Fine? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now we'll be converting it into dine per centimeter square. So bulk modulus is 2 into 10 to the power 4 multiplied by 10 to the power 6. So this is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 10 dine per centimeter square. This much is clear? How we have got the bulk modulus? Yes, ma'am. Now see, for the calculation of bulk modulus and volume and everything, we need pressure. So similarly, pressure is equal to H rho G. Now see, height is given as 3 kilometers. So this would be 3 into, it would be 10 to the power 6 centimeters. Since it is uh, 10 to the power 3 meters, and then again 2 centimeters, that makes it 3 into 10 to the power 6 centimeters. So this is height. Now see, height we have got. Density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. Density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. And acceleration due to gravity. If it's 10 meter per second square, that would be, that would come out to be approximately 1000 meter per second square. So this is 10 to the power 3. So this will come out to be 3 into 10 to the power 9. So do we have the pressure now with us? Yes, ma'am. Now see, we have the pressure, we have the bulk modulus. What was the density given? It was given 1 gram per centimeter cube. So this means mass is 1 gram and the volume is 1 centimeter cube. So we have bulk modulus with us, we have pressure with us, and we have V with us. Only delta V is unknown from this formula, minus PV by delta V. So delta V would be minus PV divided by V. So if we wish to calculate the change in the volume, this will come out to be. Pressure is 3 into 10 to the power 9. Volume is 1. Bulk modulus is 2 into 10 to the power 10. So on solving this, we'll be getting the change in volume as 0 0.15 centimeter cube. So this is the change in volume. We have the initial volume with us as 1 centimeter cube. We have the change in the volume. So can we find out the final volume? Yes, ma'am. 
we can write the change as final minus initial so yes. we have the change with us we have the initial value with us so we can find out this so it would be v minus delta v from this equation so it's 1 cm cube is original volume minus the change that we have already calculated 0.15 so this gives us 0.85 cm cube so we have the final volume now see mass is 1 gram final volume is 0.0 0.85 can we find out the final density that was demanded by the question mass you have now you have the final volume with you so it would be mass divided by the final volume so mass is 1 and final volume is 0.85 so this would be gram per centimeter understood yes ma'am okay just know this and wherever you get stuck just ask me okay Mom completed. You have noted it in here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, from B equals to minus B by delta.